Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light with another podcast and video to help support you in your policing career. So this video and podcast today is for those of you who might be outside of the police thinking about joining or for those of you who are actually in the police already and thinking about pursuing a fast track to inspector. So the fast track to inspector scheme is open to people from outside the police and people who are already police officers. Um, it's a really, really stretching program and the bar is really high for those of you who apply. Uh, I've had quite a few people this week uh, come to me to ask me to check their application forms and I've got to say, out of the several that I've checked, there's only one that is really of a sufficient high standard that's going to have any chance of getting through. So I thought I'd make this video and podcast for you to help support you if you're thinking about Fast Track to Inspector. Um, and this would also apply to those of you who are going for the rank of Inspector if you're in the promotion process already. Now I'm going to re I refer to things like one-to-ones and webinars and online courses. Uh, you can find out how to join all of those in the links below. Plenty of guidance there for you, online courses, um, webinars that I run weekly for serving officers and for potential recruits, uh, the online courses for serving officers for promotion, online courses for potential recruits, online assessment centre courses, national SIFT, one-to-ones, whole day of one-to-one -one here at my base in York and as I'm doing next week actually going out to a force to help support their sergeants who are looking to get promoted to inspector. Just recently I did something very similar for uh, inspectors going for chief inspector. So busy, busy, busy. Um, and it's all of that busyness over the past 26 years I've been doing this that enables me to give you the solid advice that's going to really enable you to ace it. So let's take a look at these application forms and the sort of questions that they ask. Now the College of Policing give you a vast amount of blurb that basically tells you this is the structure we're looking for, even down to the sort of percentage in your 300 words per answer that they want for each phase of that structure. So that's the first thing you've got to make sure you do is actually structure your answers according to what they're looking for. I know that sounds so simple, but out of the several forms that I've checked this week, there's only one who's done that. Everyone else has completely ignored that guidance. Now, they've asked four questions, uh, one of them for the value of impartiality, uh, one of them for the competency of innovative and open-minded, uh, one of them for the competency of uh, deliver, support and inspire, and one of them for the competency of we are collaborative. Questions um, aren't particularly lengthy, but they do give you really specific guidance as to what they're looking for. And again, this is like schoolboy, schoolboy error um, domain terrain here because my clients this week um, didn't really check what the question is asking for. And they're not unusual because in the 26 years I've been helping people with specialist interviews, um, promotion boards, I've always found uh, three things, three things in common that people make as mistakes. One of them is a lack of structure, um, two, a lack of detail, and three is not answering the question. So for my clients this week, it, all of the above, all of the above. And it's clearly spent a lot of time on preparing their application forms, but uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say, and I have given them this feedback, that you, you didn't read the guidance that the College of Policing sent you. And they'll fail you for that because they'll just look at your answers and just think, didn't read the guidance. So how can they ever hope to be an inspector if they didn't read the guidance? So let's take a look at some of the questions and, and some of the things that um, cropped up as errors uh, that I think we can do something about. Um, so let's just <laughs> let's look at my scribbly writing. There it is, my, it's my scribbly writing. Um, I've got to make sense of my scribbly writing, so please do excuse me. Oh, for those of you who are listening to this on podcast, I've just actually shown the A4 piece of paper that I used to make notes. So impartiality. Um, it talks about uh, gathering opinions from different people in order to make an objective decision. Um, it's a question 
that is asking for an experience from the past, so a rear-facing question. Please can you tell me about a time, basically, where you've gathered opinions from different people in order to make an objective decision. Now, the um, examples that were given just weren't complex or they didn't have enough depth. Um, they, they certainly, they'd probably be okay if you're applying to be a constable, um, for those of you who are applying from outside of the sector, but certainly not strong enough or with sufficient depth for those of you who um, are applying for a fast track inspector. They, they want something a lot more challenging and complex. So if you're a serving officer, I'd be looking at how you've um, had to gather opinions from different people in order to make an objective decision around a really complex policing problem. Um, maybe a tactic that's been utilised that's not going down well in the community uh, or frustration at the police seemingly not dealing with a contentious issue very well or maybe on one side of the community there's people who want the police to deal with something X way and on the other side of the community is people who want to deal with things Y way and there's a lot of um, frustration and anger as a result that's what they're looking for I'd be looking at issues around stop search, section 60, you know, things like that for serving police officers. Uh, for those who are non-police, I'd be looking at complex problems, similarly complex problems, and if you're thinking what stop search and what section 60, you're not ready to apply yet because your background reading should have told you that these are contentious issues, especially when it comes to the black community. So that's what I'd be looking at, something far more complex than just something where you've had to seek some advice from someone or um, seek some guidance or someone didn't quite agree with one of your decisions, which is the sort of thing that I've been seeing this week. So uh, let's pay close attention to what they're actually looking for there. Um, let's take a look at a forward-facing question now, uh, innovative and open-minded. Forward-facing questions are the ones that ask, well, like this one, how will you be proactive in tackling the issues faced by the police service. So how on your team will you be proactive, proactive at tackling issues faced by the police service? So you're pitching this at inspector level, you know, how would you manage your team in respect of um, an issue faced by the police service? Uh, for the serving officers, I've had some quite, not particularly contentious issues, you know, things like uh, file preparation. Um, we've had um, intelligence submissions uh, what else was there um, oh, not updating victims on crime reports Th these aren't big issues facing the police service they're really not I know you might be thinking they are but they're not they're really not um, where I'd be going with this and for those of you who aren't in the police service yet it doesn't matter whether you've got background in the police or not this is forward facing. This is asking how will you in the future deal with this contentious issue? I, I would I would suggest tackling issues faced by the police service. I'd say one of the biggest issues at the moment is trust and confidence from members of the public in the police, especially from the um, black community. And I know I mentioned this before, but I'm mentioning it again because it's in the race action plan from the National Police Chiefs Council and from the College of Policing. And it's a real hot potato at the moment, and, and rightly so. You know, what's changed since Macpherson in the 90s? And if you're asking the question, what's Macpherson? Again, you might not be ready for fast track promotion. Um, after the death of George Floyd, bless his soul, um, what's changed? I'd suggest not much, actually. I'd suggest there's not been a huge amount of change. Uh, if you take a look at Metropolitan Police, um, especially, they're really trying to claw back um, confidence from communities and they're really struggling with this. I know that because I was on the Deputy Commissioner's steering group uh, that was looking to looking at issues around the black community, especially from my perspective for retention and recruitment. I'm not part of it anymore because basically I fell out with a commissioner, actually the acting commissioner, uh, when I got mugged off and I asked him some questions about um, the adverse impact in the recruitment of black candidates, I just got mugged off. Uh, he blamed it on the College of Policing and I just thought, do you really want change? <laughs> if you want change, you've got to do bold things. 
but that's what they're asking you for in these application forms for Fast Track Inspector. They're asking you to come up with bold ideas. So what bold ideas do you have around the race action plan? Um, or anything else that's a contentious issue, but checking files and intelligent submissions and um, calling back victims, okay, all important, but not the, they're not the big thorny issues that the police service is facing at the moment. So let's make sure we're using something more specific because that's the other thing that was missing in the forward-facing answers was it was like a shopping list. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Lots of what you're going to do, but nothing specific about what the actual issue is or how you're going to do it. Um, so where are, where are we up to now? Deliver, support and inspire, rear-facing question um, about leading and supporting uh, colleagues um, on a challenging or complex issue, um, how, you, how you've done that in the past. So what was missing here was how you've actually led and supported colleagues. There's only one person who actually gave evidence in their answer of how they've actually led and supported colleagues. Remember, this is what the question is asking for. So make sure you deliver an answer that sits with what they're looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, still got that leg. I can't get rid of it. Uh, challenging and complex issue. I don't think it mentions that, but it's got to be a challenging and complex issue not just some kind of problem in the workplace, you know, something that's a thorny issue. That's what they're looking for. Um, I'd suggest something that's a wicked problem. And if you're thinking, I don't know what wicked problems are, then again, you know, if I'm being blunt, you might not be ready for the inspector fast track process yet. Look it up, look at wicked problems. Uh, these are problems where it's hard to even define what the problem is, never mind come up with a solution. Never mind come up with a solution that people agree with. The, the first problem that you've got, because it's so complex, so challenging, is that multiple people from different angles, different stakeholders, will all describe the problem in different ways. You can't even define it. Never mind work out a way of resolving it. So I would take a look at something where you're, you're taking colleagues through um, a change process around a complex or thorny problem, a, a wicked problem. Um, so uh, the next question, forward-facing question about we are collaborative, uh, creating an environment that allows for people with diverse styles and backgrounds to work together. So how will you create an environment that allows for people with diverse styles and backgrounds to work together? It also hints at silos, working in silos. So how are you going to reduce silos and increase collaboration across teams in the future in your role as an inspector again a lot of uh, a bit of a shopping list that came out i would be coming up with something that's far more specific as it's forward facing you can talk about collaboration between agencies that may be struggling to collaborate with each other at the moment for whatever reason or the police are struggling to collaborate with them um, and the sort of things that we talk about in the webinars and in my one-to-ones is um you know, how you can invest in the emotional bank account of that other organisation, um, walking in the shoes of others, but how specifically you're going to do that and how you're going to enable people to better understand each other's silo um, and have a better common understanding of the issues and challenges that each one of those organisations faces. The emotional bank account is about giving to that organization before they need to ask for help from you. So some, it's one of the things I used to do a lot of when I was an inspector. Um, I would ensure that I'd go to different organizations, uh, talk to them about the sort of problems that they're facing, and then just ask them, what can we do to support you? How can I support you? How can my team and the resources I can access support you in tackling this issue? And they'd say, yeah, but it's not a police problem. And I'd say, yeah, but it is. Because if it's about the welfare and existence of this community and, and community safety, then it's my business. It, it goes all the way back to the Pelian principles. Um, the police are the public and the public are the police. The police just being members of public are paid full time to carry out a role which is incumbent on all citizens in the interests of community welfare and existence. So social services, mental health teams, drug and alcohol action teams, education, health, employment, they're all part of that community welfare and existence. And so I would invest in the emotional bank account by asking them, how can we help you? How can we support you? Without asking for anything back, 
because one day I might need some support from them and all I need to do is give them a call and they will willingly give that support because I've already invested in an emotional bank account. So we can use things like that. You know, you, you come up with two or three specific ideas that you can roll out in your forward facing answers. What I got from most candidates was just a big shopping list of, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, big, 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 big shopping lists. No detail, uh, no depth, and that's what they're looking for. So folks, they, there you go. I mean, I know it might seem a bit dry this subject, but you know, if you're going for promotion to inspector, if you're going for promotion to chief inspector or superintendent, if you're doing a fast track process, these are the questions you're going to have to answer. And if you can't get past the application form, um, and if your evidence doesn't stand up to this level of scrutiny that I've just described, then you're not ready yet. You're not ready. I've been quite frank with my clients this week. Um, not blunt, I've been supportively frank. Um, they, they just weren't, they're just not ready yet. Not ready. A lot more work to do still. It's not, a, it's not a no, you'll never be ready. It's just you're not ready yet. So have a really good think about whether you're going to throw your hat into this ring because they are looking for some real, real talent here. Not to say you're not talented, but it's like super, super, super talented because um, they want you at superintendent in the space of five, six years. You know, that's what it's there for. That's what the scheme's there for. All right, folks, well, I hope you found this of interest. I know it's quite long, a bit dry in places, but hopefully there's a lot of top tips for you. And uh, come and join us. You know, join us on the webinars. Join us on the weekly practice sessions. Join us for the one-to-ones. See what I can do to help you get through the process. And I'll catch up with you soon, folks. Bye-bye for now.